Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the One Nation of Gamers 2016 Circuit Feature Tournament number two. Once again, I'm TJ, and I am joined by Crip. Crip, hey that was an exciting series. Um, it was dog actually, yeah. Yeah, Dog played some interesting decks with faced with some tough decisions and uh, really really enjoyed those games. Mm -hmm. We have here uh, Jab versus Lead Paint. A jab <coughs> is the uh, invited player. Lead Paint is the uh, the open winner. But uh, I believe I've, I've seen these players play against each other at some of the tournaments, I think, late last year. Maybe uh, I in some ESL tournament, if I don't, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken. So they, yeah. I think they have, they have, I think they have played against each other. I think uh, both these players have had, you know, a little bit of their um, uh, their play shown to the world. Maybe jab a bit more than lead paint. Um, okay, a lot more than lead paint. Yeah. They are bringing pretty similar decks, though. Both the Druid, both with Warlock, both Banned Warlock, both Paladin. And the main difference is Lead Paint has the Shaman and Jab has the Mage. I think Jab, for the longest time, has been um, a very uh, consistent uh, tempo or casino Mage player, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And always been a Hunter player, too, but Hunter... The type of hunter he likes to play is very mid rangey and mid range hunter just is isn't quite as strong at the moment. So uh, other than that, Jab just other than those two decks, Jab seems to just play what's strong. So I wouldn't ex I wouldn't be surprised if we see Secret Paladin or Druid, uh, Lead Paint uh, or Frank, uh, the upstanding citizen. I don't know if you remember the, the story that I told. He just likes to play um, broke back decks. He just likes to play decks that just you know. Go to the face, do a lot of damage. Druid, Secret Paladin, Agro Shaman. Um, he does like to play some Control Warrior every once in a while, though. But he he definitely is a player that will always just play what he thinks is best, and uh, that's uh, usually you know those the Secret Paladin, the Zoo, the Agro Shaman, and yeah, the a lot of standard decks, I guess. Um, yeah. Looks like our first match is going to be just as standard as you mentioned it. Looks like it's going to be a Secret Paladin versus a Druid. Uh, probably anyone who's played Hearthstone uh, in the last couple of months is familiar with this matchup. Basically, you just got to get pretty lucky. <laughs> There's a few very big swing cards that um, each of the players needs to do well in the match. The Druid needs that early ramp, so the Paladin falls behind on the board, and the Paladin needs that uh, very powerful uh, card or cards in the mid to late game. Uh, Mysterious Challenger, Dr. Boom and uh, maybe a Tyrion. Uh, and you also need to have a few things before it, but the whole rest of the deck is usually earlier game than that. So if you can pick up one of those big minions when you need them and you're not too far behind, you're usually going to win as the Paladin. If you get good ramp, you're usually going to win as the Druid. Yeah, and uh, Jab has another key card there, the big game Hunter. It's great to have in the hand. If you can have an empty board when Mysterious Challenger is played, you can almost ensure that you're going to have a full board clear with big game Hunter on the Mysterious Challenger. Uh, so that's definitely uh, not a good card to have in the opening hand, but a good card to have in general uh, for this matchup because it'll always find, well, most likely find a target. But uh, Jab does have some good stuff. Uh, we'll see if he can... How about this Shade? I feel like Shade has fallen out. I think a lot of people who put in uh, Living Roots have taken out Shade. People who put in uh, Ancient of War, they take out Shade. Uh, people who put in a Tech card, they take out Shade. Jab's got Shade. And yeah. BGH, which is more or less of a tech card still. Yeah, my control tech became popular for a while. Uh, that was also a uh, shade. And double avenge for lead paint is not a very strong uh, first six cards. So he's definitely not going to be too happy about that, especially if he draws into Mysterious Challenge. That's one less card that it's going to pull from the deck. It's too bad he doesn't have a silence here. Well, he can still get one next turn. He plays Belcher here. He doesn't get very good trades. Wow. Plus him kings already. So kings on that. Yeah, I, I think that's kind I, of a mistake because if if you if you buff that minion, a silence is so crushing here. Yeah, I mean, you'd you'd stack the keeper Buldemon buff, a Kings, and an Avenge on the same one one minion. 
Yeah, but this is a really smart play from Jab, sequencing this correctly so that way he gets maximum value from, from Big Game Hunter, so it doesn't even need the silence. I guess that's the Big Game Hunter out of the way for uh, for Lead Paint to play the Dark Boom later, but once you lose the board as Secret Paladin, it's really hard for you to catch back up. This low tip is very powerful, though. It stops the Innervate from curving out turn 6 play. Jab has two 7 drops, and he's unable to play either because of the low tip here. That's not bad, though. That's a great pickup. And a silence, so <laughs> this looks like a game where Jack can probably just run away with it. He's got a lot of tools to just finish out the game, and his Dr. Boom's gonna have to do a lot of work uh, if Lead Paint wants to mount to come back. The Shade's just getting lots of value. Hmm. You just Dr. Boom and go face and hope your opponent's not running Consecration. Generally, the decks that are running Keeper of Uldemon are running at least one Consecration, from what I've seen. Yeah. Depends how, how many 4-drops he's actually running. Uh, we saw one Blessing of Kings, but if it's two Blessing of Kings, maybe he doesn't have room for it. If it's two Keepers, maybe he doesn't have room for it. If it's, you know, if he adds a True Silver, maybe he doesn't really have room for it, but... Oh, Ooh. no Bomb Cascade. Yeah. And he is still a long ways off. Lethal damage. Oh, Tyrion is going to get destroyed. Actually, if he plays Tyrion, he loses. Yeah. Just from Boomba hits along. I don't think there's a way... Well, actually... Um... Hmm. No, he's dead. I don't think there's anything Lead Paint can do here. He has to get a very lucky Boomba. And I mean very lucky. Like, that Boomba has to kill his Boomba, and that has to kill the Shade. Like, that level of lucky. Mm -hmm. And that did, obviously didn't happen there. But I do, yeah, he's just dead. Silence, Savage Roar. Game over. Actually, he doesn't even need Savage Roar. He could just, just silence, silence hero, hero power. power. Yeah. yeah. But you might as well overkill. And with that, Jab is going to take uh, game number one. Got off to a decent start there. Had that big swing turn with the big game hunter and that was pretty much lead paint's board gone from that from that stage and for once uh lead paint in his open run it felt like every single game he opened with secret every single match he opened with secret paladin and took a very quick win mm -hmm. well not this time he did oh he did it try but uh it didn't it didn't end uh as he would have liked um jab's got his mage deck probably a tempo mage behind he's got a uh, a paladin deck um now Jab strikes me as a player who kind of plays what he likes rather than what everyone else thinks is best. And he does pretty yeah. well with that strategy. So I I am not that confident in pinning him on Secret Paladin, even though that his, has been by far the more popular variant of Paladin lately. Yeah, it could be a mid-range. I mean, we saw it earlier from Dog. It could be even a Murloc Paladin. It doesn't really fit the rest of his decks. Uh, so they are a little bit faster with Druid and Temple Mage, but... Uh, it is a possibility. We've also seen aggro dins, just like pure aggro, double divine favor, forget the secrets. Yeah, that's true. And the, the, the Flood Paladin, which doesn't run like the aggro tools like Blessing of Might, but still runs divine favors and just basically empties their hand, divine favors, empties their hand again and plays like sea giants and stuff. I do want to mention this hand is pretty insane from uh, Lead Paint, but that Flame Waker is a big problem. Oh yeah. Uh, leaving a flame waker up is definitely dangerous, but this means he he can't attack with it, so he's just gonna have to you know start blasting with spells. <laughs> Who needs but to attack with this hand? Yeah, that's insane. He's gonna get four missiles from this arcane blast. He's three to kill. He shielded mini bot. Oh nope, just kidding. That was a redemption. Forgot I forgot there was the second secret there. There's a noble sacrifice up still. Well, that's still really good. Yeah, and Jab has eliminated Avenge as well, so that means it's Noble Sacrifice or Competitive Spirit, uh, because he also eliminated Rede or, sorry, Repentance by playing that Flame Waker at the beginning of the turn. Yep, I think his play's solid here. You know that Secret Paladins almost always run double Noble Sacrifice, and almost never run more than one Competitive Spirit. It being either yeah. one, you play your odds, you play as if it's Noble Sacrifice, makes the correct call. 
Yeah. And Ledpin ends up picking up a secret, which is not what he wants to see at this stage, because he's going to coin out the Mysterious Challenger next turn. And another spell! Another missile spell. This time he's just going to be able to um, get rid of the secret and even uh, no, I get a fight Drake. I thought he hovered over Edge Drake. No, okay. Yeah, that would have been weird. Yeah. Especially going into turn six. That's when you sort of need to make sure you have control of the board, it feels. Well, this is a good Mysterious Challenger. Is it not? I mean, the Noble Sack kind of ensures the death of the Flame Waker. Whoa, this... This seems a bit weird. Yeah. This gets heavily punished by arcane it's like, missiles. This gets annihilated by like just spells from a spell deck. Yeah. And Jab just instantly plays it. I mean, this is going to be six missiles thrown out. He's not even worried about that repentance because he's taken full control of this board most likely unless too many of these missiles go to the face. Ooh, that's actually not a good outcome. No, not at all. Actually works out very well for lead paint. Who am I? And a Tyrion? Uh, he's still going to be a turn away from that, but we'll see. I don't think he even has many secrets left in his deck. Oh, he still pulls three. So he pulls uh, Avenge, Noble Sacrifice, and Competitive Spirit. Um, yep. There he goes. Boom. We're going to get some secret action triggering here. And that's pretty important because I don't think there's too many bad cards left in the deck here. Bars. Only bad card Lead Paint can get. Two Silver Champion? Smork? Oh, wow. Okay. I was going to say, if he goes all face, it's a bold move, buddy. He's going to try to marginalize the 1-1 uh, the one -one boom bots here. Yeah, which means that the Dr. Boom will go into the Noble Sacrifice. Unless Jab's able to pick up a Charger. Charger Fireball. With these portals. That'd be lethal. Actually, I think there is... There's potential for lethal here still. Uh, not with that. Nope. He would need... There's two Chargers. I don't... A big yeah. Charger and a small Charger. Quartermaster. Oh, jeez. That's not what he wants. Absolutely not. So he's going to hold this Avenge. Well, I guess either way he's going to Frostbolt. Um, no. Yeah, either way he Frostbolts the 7-7, seven, seven, but he was seven, really seven, hoping yeah. the Avenge would land on the 7-7 seven, seven as well. And yeah. it did not. So that is a pretty big deal. Yeah. I think you just got to drop the North Shard here. Just, it's just another card that does stuff. Not yeah. very much stuff, but if it absorbs four damage, that's good enough. Yeah. Whoa! Alright, so he's going to take three more damage, I suppose. I mean, I guess if you don't Frostbolt the 4-3, it's going to hit oh my twice. God. <laughs> he just got the other Mysterious Challenge. Yeah, too bad they didn't come last turn, but I still think Lead Paint's in a great spot. Probably... Ooh, this is actually tough. Do you kill the North Shard Cleric so it can't get rid of your Divine Shield? And he has to... He just made it a ping? Or what? do you just go face? Yeah, go face, dude. Yeah, but um, if he can't ping, then he can't... That's two extra mana that he can't use the next turn. Yeah, but if you go face, that's like... 11 less health that he can use throughout the rest of the game. Oh, oh no, I, I meant just with the choose over champion. It's only 4 less health. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I thought yeah. you had the double trade, and that's actually what he did. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I I was just only talking about the choose over champion. Mm -hmm. I guess he really wants to protect his turn. He wants to get value out of the... Uh, out of the... Truce over. He wants to make sure that he uses both charges as a truce over before it gets overridden with Ashbringer. Mm. Well, which is I don't very think that valuable. I have a priority if you're right. I mean, it's kind of annoying, but if you're going all out face and your opponent is at like nine, 
The fact that you only have three charges on Ashbringer is really not that relevant. Yeah, especially since the game is probably going to end before you use all three. Alright, so I think only Avenge left. There was a secret that was popped, and I think it's just the second Avenge. Hmm, looks like Lead Paint just wants to control this game out. He probably feels like he's got all his heavy cards. He's removed all the bad cards out of his deck. So he can probably just make this happen. Control yeah. out the Tempo Mage. I kind of like it now. But it didn't look so good earlier. I guess suppose now that he knows exactly what... Um, like the hand is. Not exactly what the hand is, but he knows there's something from Unstable Portal and then basically just... Stuff that he's picked up. So it can't he can't die. He knows that. But this is just like lethal over two turns now and... With a low tap blocking it out, there's just no way that that Jap's going to be able to come back. Yeah. And it concede. All right. Well, Blood Paint does. Uh, he doesn't get the first uh, point of the match with his Secret Paladin, but he gets the second one. Mm -hmm. I guess he's uh, he's okay with that. Uh, moving on, it's going to be uh, Shaman and Druid from Lead Paint and Mage and Paladin from Jab. We know that Jab is running his fairly traditional Mage deck. And uh, with Lead Paint just playing the best decks out there, we can probably guess roughly 58 of the 60 cards left in his two decks. Yeah, probably. And Jab's, both, both of Jab's decks that are remaining are probably, we don't know the Paladin yet, but are probably good against Druid. Mm -hmm. Tempo Mage is good against Druid. If it's anything but Murloc Paladin, it'll most likely be good against Druid, because Midrange is good, Aggro's good, Flood is good, and Secret Paladin is usually good, so Blood Paint could have trouble finding a win, and it is Secret Paladin, so now we know. Alright. Ooh, that hand. Double Secrets. Competitive Spirit and Repentance are probably not what you want to see early on against a Aggro Shaman. Oh, this Aggro Shaman hand is also a little bit slow, but if the Aggro Shaman picks up a one drop on his first draw, uh, it's, it's going to be Killer. I'm also not sure if he's mulliganed yet. If he hasn't mulliganed, uh, he can probably improve this quite a great deal. Oh, yeah. So, this matchup is pretty much just about the first couple turns. Yep. If the Shaman gets on the board and gets, like, minion damage for, like, 12 points, it's just done. Yeah. They still have to draw him to burn, but, I mean, the deck is, like, half of it is burn. Maybe even mm -hmm. more. And that's a pretty good. good start. It's not, like, outstanding, but it, it is solid. Yeah. If you pick up Feral Spirits for turn three, oh, then, it's pretty, man. then it's pretty damn good. Wow, the Lepernome before the Trogs. I'm surprised to see that. Yeah. Because Coin Minibot would destroy that. Oh, okay. Well, uh, no use playing the Trogs now because there's no Overload. And uh, Flint and Totem with Haunted Creeper is fantastic. So. Okay. I think you want one face here. There you go. Now you have both, so now you now you go for it. This is a huge power play. I think you'd actually trade here. You want the Paladin to have less minions, and you want to have more minions. The yeah. number of minions is so relevant. Yeah, being able to trade with Flame Tungtonum if you need to with some of the small stuff is super important. And Jab's just oh man, just having the hero power and play a single secret. Well, this is what you is... get for playing Secret Paladin. It is almost always one of these turns. Yeah. Fits out the curve perfectly. Oh, jeez. How much how much points of damage did you say you needed to fit in? Only 12? These uh, tunnel trogs are probably going to get in for upwards of 15. Mm, That's all set yeah. It seems unlikely that Jab's going to be able to recover the board. So I think he's actually just going to die to these. Yeah, I'd say so. I don't think those are ever going to die. 
Yeah. Because, I mean, the first priority is the flame tongue, still, right? So you have to kill the flame tongue, which you're not doing next turn. You're doing the turn after the next. And then you have to consider killing the tunnel trugs. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. And a Doomhammer picked up. On five. There you go. On five. On five with both tunnel trucks oh, on the cow. floor. Yeah. All right. So Lead Pain takes the two to one lead and has Druid remaining. But we talked about it a little bit earlier. Jab's decks do do well against Druid. So. They did pretty well. I think the Mage is uh, quite a good deck against Druid. But I think the Paladin is very close to 50%. Very close, yeah. You you mentioned some points earlier. It's all sort of about that um, whether or not the druid can find that stabilization turn. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much, it's it's about druid in most matchups. It's do they find ramp? Do they find you know a, a big threat early? And can they make a swing turn if they fall behind with a swipe or, or like a big game hunter? And seems to be the case a lot. But we are going to move into game number four. Uh, Jab's going to throw out the paladin first. Uh, throwing out the poor matchup first. That way, if he, he does make it to a game number five, then he, he is in a good spot. Yeah, the order doesn't really matter. Your opponent has one deck left. In yeah, fact, you got to win with both. In fact, I think because this, this tournament is broadcast and uh, win or lose, Jab will have to continue playing. His mage is much more of a wild card deck than the Paladin. So I think strategically speaking, in terms of releasing information to your future opponents, playing the Paladin is absolutely the correct decision. Yeah. Unless he has a crazy tech card snuck into his Paladin deck that doesn't want anybody to see. Mm. But what kind of crazy tech card are you going to sneak into a secret Paladin? Maybe a Blood Knight? Nah. I don't see that happening. Maybe a Blingtron? <laughs> Maybe a Gelbin Mechatork? Nah. What cards could you even work into a Secret Paladin? I think something like Seal of Champions. I think putting a Seal of Champions in a Secret Paladin deck is something you'd want to show off, because it's one of those cards that you're constantly terrified against. And I know from playing against this card in Arena every single day. <laughs> what about, uh, what's that one card called? The, uh, was it the Recruiter? The Silverhand Recruiter? Oh no, that blows. The 5-4? That yeah. puts a... 2-2 two, two in your good. hand. That is not a good card. On Inspire. It's a great tech card. And right. I'm kind of curious. I haven't ever seen it. And I feel like it's just it's just time is, is almost due. Why haven't we seen Sacred Trial and Secret Paladin? Because, like, yeah, we know the card is not good. But we also know that your opponents are never, ever going to play around it. Because we've never seen it in Secret Paladin. But it's so bad. <laughs> like, the, a fourth minion that's played is usually just like an afterthought minion. Yeah. It's usually just, uh, like, ah, well, I guess I'll throw down this Darnassus Aspirant. Well, there's a card here that's pretty good, and it rhymes with wipe. <laughs> Yep. And he's also got second swipe as well, so... Mm -hmm. Jab needs some help here in the form of a large minion. At least the Seeker Keeper's gonna come back. Yeah, but his minions are... Oh! <laughs> yeah! Oh, baby. That's what we were talking about. Yeah. Yeah, he's probably just gonna swipe again. Probably gonna swipe again, and he's gonna realize that he's in terrible shape right after. Probably, yeah, okay. Only one card. How bad could it be? Turns out, pretty bad. Yeah. Still pulls six secrets. And since the board isn't empty, not even a BGH would, would be like a board clear here. Yeah. It's also important to know that I think BGH is pretty common in Druid, but it's not an auto-include. I don't think you can really assume it's an every Druid. I'd say 99%. Really? You'd go that high? I'd go that high, yeah. Okay. Oh, I trust you more. You, you play more constructive than I do. But without hearing your answer, I probably would have guessed 95. Yeah, I I, I don't think I've ever built a mid-range deck that didn't have Big Game Hunter unless I forgot it. Mm-hmm. 
So maybe 95 just for the people that are like me that forgot it. Okay. Because I'd, I'd say the percentage at which I forget things is 5%. <laughs> so, so there's your leeway. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Lead Paint uh, would probably like to forget about this game pretty soon. Uh, it yeah. looks like he's going to get... Uh, facial here expression. Shortly. Yeah. And trades into the Azure Drake with both swipes gone. I guess maybe worried about multiple spells. Mm, like Wraths or Living Roots, but mm -hmm. uh, not too sure. Uh, I mean, Jab pretty much just wins, it, it feels like. Uh... Oh my. <laughs> Are you serious? I'd say that's pretty good. The thing is, he just has to trade oddly into this ancient. But then he can just smack down a Tyrion. Yeah. Not have to worry about swipe. Yeah, I don't really see too much of a disappointment still. Needs a miracle card. Well, that is a miracle card, but that's <laughs> not that's not quite good enough, I don't think. Not the type of miracle that he's looking for in this situation. I think the only way he stays alive is by healing his face and living roots on the seven two. And I'm not is that sure really what a life? secret is up there. Is that really a life you want to win? You want to live, though. Uh, I it's think it's also, noble, noble sack and avenge. Yeah, avenge might actually give him lethal anyway, right? Twelve. Yeah, avenge makes it so he just loses anyway, even if he does that play. Yeah. Regardless of where it lands, he can't deal with it. Even if he attacks in first, which hit the next Ramus, <laughs> then it uh makes it. So that the Avenge could proc on the Mysterious Challenger and he'd lose anyway. He'd lose anyway no matter what. Yeah. And he's gonna realize he just hundred percent here. Yep. Alright. Well it's tied up now. We got two the last X. Looks like Jab's mage is gonna be uh you know, up up for bat again here. Um I have seen Jab like do very well with this mage deck in tournaments I haven't cast. But I think in every tournament I have cast, it's been the deck that sunk him. <laughs> Tempo Mage is... I think that you just summed up Tempo Mage for every player. Mm -hmm. It's either a deck that you just dominate with, and you know it's like the highlight deck of the tournament, or it just sinks you. And that's a pretty good hand, I'd say. Oh, yeah. Flame Cannon is such a good card against Druid. As are a lot of the other cards in the stack. Flame Cannon often will kill a minion that a Druid will innervate. Uh, Mirror Entity will often uh, make you want to stop playing Druid whenever you ramp out anything. And yep. uh, Mad Scientist, I believe, is going to bring out at least one of them. Uh, we saw one counter spell from this deck earlier, but it's um, it's difficult to say if this deck is running three secrets. Often with aggressive decks, you'd just run two scientists, two secrets, because it's so unlikely that you're going to draw two scientists and one secret in any game. Yeah. Ooh, very slow play there. He could have uh, Mana Worm then coined out the other uh, Mad Scientist. Yeah, that makes his turn three play a little bit weird. Because next turn he can just hold on to the coin, play Mana Worm and Mad Scientist, and hold on to the coin to buff it up sort of like on demand. Um, so... He, he realized that his if he coined out the Mad Scientist that turn, he would have just put a, a bit of extra power on the board, just and but ruined his turn three play. All right, well the Druid wants to ramp. That kind of surprises me. I guess he's probably going to go all in on the Sylvanas here. Yeah, and that's a pretty smart play. Oh, Arcane Intellect. That is. Duplicate. I mean, I, I think I would have just cashed in on the Arcane Missiles there. It's 4 damage for 0 arcane mana. Missiles? Well, you could have done Arcane Missiles for 4 damage, Coin for 1, and Frostbolt for 4. So that would have been an extra uh, 3 plus 3 plus 3, an extra 9 damage for 1 mana. To the face. That would have put him at 15. You would have had lethal the next turn. 
I mean, he probably just has lethal the next turn anyway. He's just going to ignore the Sylvanas and let Pain, you can see his face, just slowly realizing that he's about to move down to the to the, to the the loser's match. I think he has to play the keeper on the Sylvanas. He's dead no matter what. A, he can only assume that it's a mere entity. What to do? Uh... No, oh, yeah, yeah, he, that's true. If that. he takes the Mana Worm, he's not dead. It's a one out of four to stay alive. I guess this is more consistent. This takes off four damage guaranteed. Oh, whereas, if he if he kills the Savannah, he takes off... Oh, I see. Yeah, he takes yeah, off right, of right. potentially five, but most likely two. And this is just so hard to come back three. from. Okay. Needs two missiles to the face. Uh, is this more likely? Well, all his minions have two health, so. Hmm. I think he missiles first. I think you do missiles first. Or don't missiles at all. That was lethal! I mean, that was 50% chance at lethal. Yeah. And That's not I, bad at all, honestly. Yeah. Well... Wouldn't you love 50% chance at lethal right now? I would. Now he has a... Again, a 50% chance at lethal. Because he could Arcane Blast the... Uh, it might even be 100%. No, it's, it's higher. It's higher. It's not 100%, but it's higher. Wait, it is 100%. It is 100%. Yeah, it's 100% can... lethal. Yeah. It's flame cannons. Yep. You, you just you just play all the stuff, and you win. Play it all. Even if all those missed, and you still won. You can yeah. Flame cannon. All right, well that's Jab taking the series. Not bad. Moving on to face Dog in the winner's match, if yeah. I remember correctly, and Liv Pink goes down to do. face Astrogation. It is actually the two invited players that have uh, advanced. Um, I think it's actually unusual from what I've seen. Typically in, uh, well, it's only a small sample size, so you know it happens. But typically in the tournaments with lots of qualifiers, um, I think the qualifiers do actually uh, more often than not beat the invited players as um, there's a reason they qualified through so many. Yeah, there is a reason. And I think last week it was like the opposite, or for the first feature it was like the opposite, um, where the qualified players, I oh, no, I think it was double, it was two and two. Mm. Um, that made it into the playoffs, so it was like pretty evenly split. Uh, but Eversiction, who was one of the players who made it through uh, via uh, Open, was actually the player that qualified, that won the last feature and qualified through. So uh, it seems to be a good mix. But uh, again, it is a it is a great way for up and coming players to sort of get that that competitive experience that they need. Just by you know placing highly in one open, it can lead to a string of tournaments. You get to the feature, you win the feature, you get to the to uh, go to the finals at PAX Prime. So a lot of money. Um, the next open, like we said earlier, is on April 30th. So in two weeks is the next open. So if you want to participate and have your chance to play in a feature or be featured on stream in our open streams, make sure you guys go ahead and sign up on the website that's right below, geico.onog.gg. Crip, are you going to play in it? Are we going to meet in the open? Are you going to venture over to Constructed Land? I mean, probably will venture over to Constructed Land, but I don't know if I'll participate in that one. Oh, yeah, because uh, I don't know the exact release date, but that's around the time um, that a lot of people are speculating Sandra will be released. So, yep. Uh, oh, and I think I'm automatically disqualified. Ah, that's right. Because I'm, I'm Canadian. You are Canadian. You are not in uh, a USA brother of mine. It is USA only, but... Um, it, it does have a big prize pool, so if you're in the U.S. and you want to compete, make sure you do that. You won't play against Crypt, though, but you will play against me. Um, but we are going to have to take a quick break. Uh, I think we're going to head over to the winner's, winners round. Yep. Winners so it'll match. be more of Jab, and he's going to be playing uh, Dog, who we saw just earlier. All right, well, I'm looking forward to that match. But don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back in a few minutes with the winner's match for Feature 